The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now logged into War Up on the Whippeal, featuring your hosts, Greg Warnick and Jeff Upson. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. Welcome into War Up on the WPIAO. Greg Warnock alongside Jeff Upson. And it is hard to believe the state championships coming up this weekend after a fantastic uh, weekend of wrestling at Canamac for the Southwest Regional Championships and the WPIAL. A lot of great wrestling we got to see this past weekend. A lot of good wrestling, Greg. And, you know, I was I was definitely happy to see some of the matchups that we wanted to see happen. And, you know, there was there were some surprises there, too. I think we'll get into all those. And then, of course, it's it's very easy to look ahead at what's to come this week in Hershey. Looking at 106 pounds, Dylan Chappell wins the title, and boy, he is tough to score on. That's what I took away from this 106-pound championship, but Carter Diver was in on so many shots, just could not finish, and Chappell, being so hard to score on, was able to take advantage and finally win the match in overtime, but... Boy, I think that, that's the biggest thing. Uh, if, if it's hard to score on Chapel, then he's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, and, you know, everyone knows that. I, I don't think it's a, a secret now that Dylan Chapel is very, very difficult to, to finish on. Uh, I think part of that has to do with him and Ali Herrera Rondon training together, and he's so difficult to score on, and those two probably make each other so much better. Uh, points probably are, are very slim to none in that room uh, between the two of those. Uh, when you look at that Dylan Chapel, if you do you remember the semifinals match he had with Prinky? Um Prinky was able to come back and, and nearly win that match. Uh right. but but Chapel was able to hold on and, and get a, a victory. But we kind of figured that he would go into to overtime with Diver. I expected it. Um we saw them wrestle at the surge and it was a very tight match. It wasn't overtime, but it was really close. Um but Chapel looked so comfortable in that tiebreaker period. I, I thought he did. Yeah, he really did. And I, I thought Divert, the way he was opening up his offense in his first three matches, that he'd be able to get a takedown on uh, Chapel, but it just was not the case and was not able to finish any of his shots. And another guy who uh, ends up getting to uh, the state tournament, Costa Moore from Cannon McMillan, uh, a little bit surprising to you? Um, not not entirely surprising because, uh, I mean, Costa Moore, we, we kind of, you know, we questioned how well he would do at 106 coming down, um, you know, whether it was a, a hard cut for him or not. But I, I wasn't surprised to see him uh, do well here. He had a really t- tough first round match. He won one nothing over uh, Matt Sarotka from North Hill, which I thought, uh, I, yeah, I, I kind of thought that. I was like, man, Vince Toronto probably is going to beat him here. Uh, but he does a, a good job. But the, the biggest match for me was that 4-3 ultimate tiebreaker win in the blood round against Briar uh, Priest from Hempfield. That that was the match that got him to state tournament. But then he, he followed it up with a tough match against Prinky, too. So, I mean, the kid just doesn't quit. He, he's he's going to be in there. He's going to fight for every point. Um, and and Diver only beat him 5 nothing. So he, he can keep it close. You look at the state bracket for 106 pounds, and the top half looks pretty loaded. Yeah, I mean, absolutely loaded. Um, on the seeding positions where they have the, the top five regional um, champions here seeded, Aiden Lewis from Searcliffs on the top half. So is Carter Dybert up there. So I expect Dybert to, to meet Lewis there. Dybert beat him up pretty good at the Powerade Tournament. He was able to get to a takedown and some turns, so he was able to, to really separate himself from him. I do expect him to do that. Uh, I think he's going to meet Hauserman from Council Rock North in the semifinals. Um, on the bottom half, I like Dylan Chapel's shot here. Uh, there's a tough matchup on the bottom half. Keep an eye on this one. Kyle Waterman and Dante Frenzy. That's a good first-round match. And Nick Allison from Mifflin County is also down there. But I do expect... I, I do think that we're going to see an all Whippeal final here. I would be surprised if we don't. Yeah, I mean, two guys uh, really battling against each other this past weekend, and it should be a lot of fun uh, to see if they can both make it to the final. 113 pounds. Herrera does it again as he wins a, uh, or does it for once. He gets a WPIO championship, came up just short a year ago, but he does it without giving up a point. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, you look at the, his results, 15 nothing, uh, fall in a minute, and 3 nothing in the, the semis, and then 8 nothing in the finals. Boy, I was really impressed with him in the finals. You know, um, Finn Solomon kept it kind of close with him, and he was able to, to frustrate him a little bit. But, man, he really opened up against Burkholder, a really solid Burkholder. He really uh, 
you know, made it made it look like, OK, I'm the top guy here. And he even said that when we interviewed him, he wants to, to sort of separate himself from the rest of the field. So uh, I was very impressed with him. And I was also impressed with Finn Solomon to come back for third. And he nearly teched uh, Angelico from Latrobe 14 nothing in the third place match. And really the big surprise, I think, Angelico beating uh, Kyle Bur- or, uh, Jimmy Baxter, rather, excuse me, for the uh, Constellation semis to get in. Yeah, and Jimmy Baxter, unfortunately, you know, he made it to the semifinals then lost to, to Burkholder 5-2. And, and I kind of expected him to, to be in that third-place match. Uh, remember, he has a win over Finn Solomon this season, so uh, I'm sure Jimmy's disappointed. He's he's had a great year, and it's a shame that, you know, it had to come to a, a close early, but uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll re- rebound. 113 pounds a lot of depth here in this weight class but Herrera definitely stands above the rest yeah for sure I mean you look at at the weight class and and he is I mean I think he's head and shoulders above the rest of them but I wouldn't look past a guy named Andrew Smith from Nazareth he's a returning state medalist he was second in the northeast region he's going to be a a threat uh, on the top half Matt Mayer from Bethlehem Catholic is also returning state medalist Max Mendez those are all guys that I think can keep it close with him but I don't expect them to to pull an upset on the bottom half Tal Reese Fleming from Liberty um, he could very well see Finn Solomon in that first round and I think that's a, a problem for him because Finn if he wrestles like he did last weekend I think he has a, a chance to kind of bust open the bracket a little bit um, Burke Holder I like Burke Holder's chances of, of doing well here he's gonna have a tough first round matchup with Nathan Lucier but I, I think he uh, could do well here I mean he was third in the state last year so yeah I mean these two guys uh pulling a couple upsets could conceivably see three guys in the semifinals if you if solomon can beat fleming i think he makes it to the semifinals and if burkholder ends up uh you know he's gonna have a couple tough matches but either way i mean this is a weight class with depth but these two guys provide a lot of that no i agree and i think you know it all depends on those matchups and i think um we could see three guys from the wpl here i think definitely one um from from wpil but i think all three of them will definitely be pushing for the top eight Curtis Phipps wins his third WPIL championship at 120 pounds. The biggest surprise came on Friday night. Cole Hamada of Waynesburg losing 4-2 to two to Ethan Bergen of Hempfield. They wrestle again for third and fourth, and Hamada avenges that loss, coming back to win four matches for third. But Logan Saliga able to take advantage and get second. Yeah, and, you know, I wasn't I wasn't surprised to see Saliga uh, end up getting second here. I thought he was going to push uh, either Kyle, uh, Cole Hommett or uh, Bergnick, whoever it made it out there, and he did push him um, and get to the finals. Now, Fripps just kind of showed what kind of level he's on. He's just uh, he's a really special wrestler, and I think he's wrestling on all cylinders here. He, he's, he beat Kellen Laffey from Pine Richland 9 uh, nothing, And as you mentioned, Cole Hommett comes back to get that third-place finish. Another thing that stood out to me was the fact that uh, Dom Giordano from Kiski he had a heck of a run in the wrestlebacks. He yes, beat he, he beat Bryce Wilkes ten five, and, and I remember I was watching that match and I thought I must have the scores mixed up here, uh, but I didn't. And Giordano had a, a great tournament. Bryce Wilkes beat Garrett, Tom, Garrett Thompson from Franklin Regional, loses to Kellen Laffey, drops down, um, and then gets gets beat up by Giordano. What I mean, that's just I think it just shows that Kiski that Kiski mentality, that Kiski schedule. Yeah, it really does, and uh, definitely it was a fantastic tournament for Giordano, even though he comes up one win shy of the state tournament. You look at the uh, state bracket, Phipps gets the top seed to 120 pounds. Again, another weight class that has a lot of names here in this one, and he's going to have a lot of challenges to uh, get to the final. This, these, this bracket is filled with landmines. They're everywhere in here. Um, there's not an easy match. There, there really isn't uh, anywhere here, I, I would say. Um, Curtis Fish is at the top, but that doesn't mean a whole lot because on the top you also have Cole Wilson and Cam Enriquez. Now remember, Cam Enriquez is a guy he wrestled in the Powerade Finals. He had a win over Ryan Sullivan. Cole Wilson was fourth in the state last year. He's he's a stud. He's 35-2. and two. He's mo- I, I don't, Whoever wins that match is going to give Phipps uh, a lot of problems. Um, you know, I think Phipps wins that match, but I also think it's going to take a lot out of him. Uh, you also have Matt Maloney from Beth um, Liberty on there, on that side. He's also a, a state medalist. And Shane Hanson-Ashworth from Council Rock South, a guy who beat 
state runner-up Killen Delaney uh, last weekend. So that top half is just full, full of talent, um, and it doesn't get much easier on that bottom half. You have Will Betancourt from Mannheim Central. As I mentioned, Killen Delaney from Westchester Henderson, who was a state runner-up last year. Logan Sleek is ha- going to have his hands full with Luke Lucerne from Council Rock Na- uh, North in that first round. Uh, Lucerne's a guy who was a state medalist two years ago. He was a state qualifier last year. In fact, we saw him in the, the finals of the surge tournament where he lost to Jared Kessler. Um, so, yeah, and then you throw in a guy named Sean Pearson from Nazareth uh, who, who came out of a really, really deep northeast region. He's a returning state medalist. I think this is going to be a really tough bracket to win. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I do expect Phipps uh, you know, to be in the top part of that bracket, but, boy, the WPL is going to have a tough standing to get anyone else on the uh, podium just because of how deep this weight class really is. 126 pounds, Colton Camacho wins his second WPIAO championship, and he does it avenging a pair of losses against Darren Miller. He just looked much, st- he looked strong on his feet throughout the entire tournament. Yeah, no, he did. He, he stepped up his game. Uh, you know, I thought that match with Kenny Heyman when he won 7 3 really. Uh, showed that that he was focused because you know he had lost or he had he had beat Heyman by one point the last two times in fact the the one time it was an ultimate tiebreaker so obviously something was going on right between the years there with with Camacho and Colton was able to do the same in the finals I mean he looked great in that first period he got ridden out the entire second period by by Miller but he still found a way to win and that's huge especially losing a guy twice in the year I mean that's that's a mentally hard thing to come back from Oh, most definitely. Another guy really impressive, Jared Kessler of Connellsville. He not only beats Kenny Heyman for third place, but he also beat Jordan Waters of West Allegheny, a guy as a state qualifier last year, impressive by the freshman. Yeah, I mean, that's a junior he he beat in Jordan Waters. And um, as as you mentioned, him getting to the semifinals and dropping down, he had a, a good win over uh, Kenny Heyman 4-2 to take third. So, um, But you know what? It doesn't really – it doesn't – do him any favors because if you look at the state bracket where he feeds in a draw he got a a really tough draw you know i almost rather be that that southwest four uh as opposed to the third but if kessler should should win his first match against chase barlow from strathaven also a freshman he's going to get uh the number one guy in the state and that's jj wilson from cedar cliff a power a champion a guy we're pretty familiar with so you know, it's a tough draw for him, but uh, as we saw last week, and he's he's not going to be afraid to battle back and, and compete hard against people in the wrestlebacks uh, if if he ends up there. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how he uh, performs in the consolation rounds because that that is a tough draw. And if he beats Wilson, he's going to Patrick Gold, so it's a you know he's not going to have an easy task to to get there. But I like Darren Miller getting here to the semifinals. Yeah, you know. Um, I look at, and obviously I think Colton's sitting in a better position up top, but, uh, Darren Miller, he's, he's going to have a tough first round match. Uh, Krakowski's not, not a, a guy I'd look past. Um, and then he's probably going to likely get Matt Sarbo from Altoona, a, a guy who's up from one Oh six. He's had a, a kind of an up and down years, 35 and three, but he had a couple losses that, um, you know, he, he actually lost to Trent Donahue, but avenged that loss. So I think Miller is is in position to make it to the semifinals, no doubt. Um, but I look at the top half in Colin Camacho. I think he'll probably see Torres in that first round match, uh, Pertilla possibly in that, that quarterfinal. And then he's most likely going to see Patrick Noonan from Stroudsburg um, in the semifinals, the guy he has beaten before the state tournament. So I, you know, if Colton goes out there and wrestles like he is the top dog, which he should be, I mean, let's not forget he was a state finalist last year. He's been there before. He's been on the, the main mat. So he has to go out there and wrestle like that's his. 132 pounds, outstanding wrestler of the tournament, Sam Hillegas. He also wins his third WPIAL championship. He's running on all cylinders right now, getting ready for his big matchup in Hershey. Gabe Willishow was a clear-cut number two at this weight class. Jason Geyer, Seneca Valley, had a good tournament. No, Jason Geyer had a great tournament here. I was very impressed with the way he wrestled, and I thought he had he was poised to get to the, the state tournament before he had never made it to the state tournament before. He had a, a nice win, 5-2 over Zach McCann to put himself in the semifinals. After he lost to Hillegas, he comes back and beats a state qualifier, Zach Macy. Uh, Macy's a guy who was a state qualifier last year. Geyer gets a 3-2 win, and then he pins McCann um, in the, the third-place match, so I was very impressed with him, but you can't say enough about Sammy Hillegas. Now, let's, let's look at this. He beat a returning state medalist and the number four guy in the state by tech fall 18 2 
I mean, that, that's insane. Um, you know, talk about firing all cylinders. He, he's, he's going there and some. Um, and I, I got to talk to him afterwards, and he says it's hunting season. He says, I, we're just going out, and we're, we're taking everyone down. It doesn't matter who stands in my way. I'm, I'm going to take them down. Well, he's going to have one of the toughest tasks, and that's going to come in the semifinals because of the way the seeds fell. Julian Klebo and Northampton on the top half with him. So that's going to be probably one of the best matches of the entire state tournament. That's what I'm going to go out and say. One of probably the three best, potentially. And it's going to be in the semifinals. No, it, uh, it's going to be the best match. It's the most anticipated match of the weekend in both classes. Um, it is it is a blockbuster showing between two top ten ranked guys in the nation. Um, both of them are just highly, highly touted uh, wrestlers. And, and, I mean, the, the, the laundry list of accolades goes on and on. These two are, are no strangers to each other. They have wrestled in the past in some off-season stuff, nothing in season. But, yeah, Sammy Hillegas, uh, Julian Klebov, number one versus number two in the state. And, and Klebov, having been out all of last year, he got no prestige points for his um, – previous two state championships because that doesn't factor into it i have uh i've clarified that with the piaa uh we all kind of knew this was going to happen in fact i wrote an article about this showing how it was going to happen um and, and you know it, it's funny because if, if i'm on that bottom half i'm i'm thinking yes here we go uh <laughs> you know and and, and gabe Wilshow is one of those guys on that bottom half uh I never count out Gabe. I mean, he, he's he's a guy who can score in some weird positions, and he can end up getting uh, some some points where you would otherwise say you're going to give up the points. Kenny Herman from Becca is also down there. Cade Balestrini and Lucas Ritchie. But um, I think Gabe has a good shot to potentially get to the semifinals here. Uh, but all the talk and all the, the action is going to be in that semifinal between Sammy Hillegas and Julian Klebo. It's going to be a war. Yeah, and really it's about is Hilligus going to be able to open up his offense because sometimes when he gets in those big matches, he shuts down a little bit, plays a little defensively, where Klebov, I think he's just going to come after him. Uh, Klebov, because of the fact he can't be a four-time state champ, which if he would have wrestled last year, he would have won a state title, and he would be a three-timer going for a fourth. He's trying to stop Hilligus from getting that same opportunity, so he's going to come after him. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and that and that's the thing. I mean, Sammy's got to go into this with his mind set on, I don't care if I lose, I'm going out there and, and wrestling, and to I'm opening it up, or wrestling to win, right? Not not to lose, right? Wrestling not to lose. So, I, you know, and that's the that's the issue. And I think the, the you look back at power rate two years ago when he wrestled Bo Bartlett and he lost to him, you know, that was the big thing because the whole undefeated thing. Um, he only has one loss in his career, and that's to Bo Bartlett, right? Um I think that's something that once that happened, it may have eased some pressure on him that, okay, I'm not going to be an undefeated four-time state champion. But now you have Klebov, who, like you said, most likely probably would have been going for his fourth state title had he not been out for the year. But he has nothing to lose. And if Hilgis goes out there and, and tries to you know, just shell up and, and not open his offense, he's going to have problems because Klebov – that's not the way he wrestles. Klebo's going to go out there and go after him. Um, this match is, is going to be a lot of fun on, on different levels because they're both pretty good uh, offensively on their feet. Klebo's a little slicker, maybe a little bit quicker, whereas Sammy's a little bit more finesse. Like he's more uh, just kind of just does some, you know, the right things really well, so to speak. Uh, Klebo does some kind of goofy things. Not, not that he's a, a it doesn't put him in a bad position, but he just kind of um, is able to move his body in certain ways. And then on the mat, you know, Klebov has to be able to get out from bottom against Hillegas because you know how difficult he is from top. We saw it against Gabe Willishow. He could potentially get some back points on, on – there's no one in the state I don't think – Hillegas can turn, can't turn. And the question is, can Hillegas get out from under bottom too? Because he struggles at times. Yeah. Like on from ground. I mean, Willishow was able to get back points on Hillegas. So yeah, that was a that was a funky position. But yes, you're right. He he's. I mean, sometimes he puts himself. You know, I was happy to see that. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I was happy to see him give up points because it showed that he was going for it. In my opinion, you know, Jason Nolf gets taken down kind of often you know more so than you would say as a national champion because he kind of you know it's play wrestling he kind of goes out there and puts himself in positions where sometimes he does end up giving up a reversal or a takedown because he knows i'm the better wrestler right so he just has to go in there knowing i'm gonna i'm the better wrestler i'm gonna win this match even if i give up a takedown remember he gave up a takedown in the state finals last year to chris wright from central dolphin right out in the first period um yeah. was able to were able to fire back and, and win that match so He's got to stay composed. He's got to stay focused, and he's got to open up his offense, or else he's going to lose four two, four three, whatever it is, because Klebov's 
he has nothing to lose. Yeah. As far as Gabe Willishow goes, I think you do uh, like his chances going to the semifinals, so we'll see if he can uh, potentially pull an upset and make it to the final as well and join Hilligus. 138 pounds for the WPIA on Nick Coy. He had every other medal. He had fourth, third, second, and he's able to get at the top of the podium. He joined us last week, and it was good to see Coy at the top. Yeah, he just wanted to do a tour of the podium. Yeah. That's all. He just wanted to, to know what it felt like to stand on each spot. So it was only natural that he got first at this tournament, right? And the only guy making his fourth state appearance coming up this weekend. Yeah, right? That's crazy to think because, you know, talking about – I mean, I think that kind of shows – senior class of of the WPI is uh, maybe a little bit weaker than it has been in years past but yeah Nick Coy was able to get a, a hard fought 3-2 win over Ty Lindsberger a guy he's, he knows pretty well those two are pretty familiar with each other and he was really pumped after that that finals match and uh, you know I, w- I wanted to see him open up a little bit more obviously um, Nick's a guy who, who does wrestle a little conservatively but he got the win and he got the job done now he goes in as one of the top seeds here Another guy making it to the tournament, Daniel Yetzik of Ambridge. He was the ace seed coming into this, and he had a lot of tough bouts. He won in double overtime just in the uh, round of 16 against Ian Scarberry and then able to win three straight matches, including a win over Drew Vlasnik and Dewan Herzog, to be able to get to that fourth-place spot. Yeah, I was super impressed with, with Dan and, and how he was able to come out and compete. As you mentioned, I didn't think that was going to be a, a easy match for him against Scarberry, but I didn't think it was going to go to tiebreaker. Um, so that was a little you know worrisome at seeing him go to tiebreaker with Scarberry. But after losing to, to Coy, he bounces his back, as you said. And, and really, he I mean, he handled Drew Vlasnik from Seneca Valley, a tough Drew Vlasnik. Um, and, and I was very impressed with him there. Lucas was able to beat him, and, and uh, Yesik was banged up a little bit. I don't know if you saw that or not. He was. Yeah. I, I don't know the extent of that. I, I'm hoping that it's not anything serious and that he's able to go. Um, in fact, we were having a conversation about that up on Media Row afterwards and saying, well, if he can't go, how do they determine that fourth-place spot? Um, you know, every other region in the state – wrestles a fifth and sixth place match. I have no idea why the WPL doesn't do that. Every other region, they have at least one more bout wrestled for an alternate, you know, uh, in, in case someone gets hurt. So I'm very confused at why the WPL doesn't do that. I mean, um, you could throw an extra mat down at the Canamac gym. I mean, there's, sure. there's, they go three across always anyway, so I, don't under, I agree with you. I don't know why they don't either. And, and plus, I mean, it gives you, again, it's another medal. You know, if we're going to be in that that era of hey, everyone needs a, a ribbon or something, but it is it's two different two more medals. Um, you know, and I think it it, it just really uh, tightens it up a little bit and says, okay, well, you know, hey, I was the fifth best guy out of the region. I, I was, I, I don't know, I just I don't see why they don't in case a situation like this. I'm surprised it hasn't come back where a guy is is injured and he's not able to go. And how do they determine? I mean, I'm just, I'm sure there's a way. In fact, I know there's a way that you can do it, but. Wouldn't you rather have a fifth place bout? Well, let's ask everyone who listens. Should we have a fifth place bout? And, uh, uh, it's a good, good question, Greg. So we we got a lot of questions coming in this week for our, our for our podcast preview uh, that we'll be doing on our other show, and um, that, that's a question I want to answer. Should the WPIL in in AAA have a fifth place bout? Now, remember, this serves as both. They get two medals after this. They get a District Seven medal and they get a regional medal. So. Should the, the WPIL have a fifth-place match? Just get a District 7 medal. Don't need a regional medal. Don't need a regional medal. Right. And then we have the extra guy in the event that somebody gets hurt. Now we know who that fifth-place guy is, and there's no debate about it. Answer okay. us. Let us know. At PA Power Wrestle on Twitter. At PA Power Wrestling on Facebook. Or just email us. Jeff.Upson at PAPowerWrestling.com. Let us know what you think. Ty Linsenbigler is at the top half of the bracket. He gets a very tough draw. He gets Jeff Boyd. Uh, he finished second in the region. He lost to Ed Scott of Dubois in his region. So he's going to have a tough one coming out of the gates. Yeah, well, actually, uh, Boyd didn't actually wrestle. He forfeited, medical forfeited that match uh, to Ed Scott. So he actually didn't step out onto the mat. But um, he is a returning state champion. Um, he is banged up, but I, I don't know to what extent. So it's a good it's a good draw for for uh, Lindsenbigler, I think, because if he wants to to prove it, you know, this is the time to do it. You could beat uh, Jeff Boyd, a state champion, and then you could probably have Tyler Williams from Souderton. So uh, it, it definitely a tough draw for him. Um, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not mad at the fact that uh, Nick Coy's on that bottom half. But look who he could get in that first round. If say Yetzik is healthy and he's ready to go, he could feed right into to Coy, and we could see a rematch of that um, that match from uh, last weekend. So Luke has has a tough draw with Deshaun Farber from Nazareth. I think that's a, a tough tough draw for him. 
But 38 is another one. There's there's potential landmines everywhere here. Maybe not as much as 20 or 32, but there's still there's a lot of guys here that I think could cause issues. Yeah, Coy could see uh, Devin Britton in the quarters and then Ed Scott in the semis on his way to potential final uh, right there. Yeah, the, the question is how healthy are these guys, right? Devin Britton's a guy who was third in the state last year. We, we don't know how healthy he is. He medical forfeited in that finals match uh, to Deshaun Farber, much like Jeff Boyd did. So the two top guys here, Jeff Boyd and, and Devin Britton, are, are two guys that are banged up. So the question is, is Ed Scott going to be able to take advantage of that? And I think he is. I think Ed Scott's just on a, a different level right now. I, I think he's going to be able to get to the, the finals. 145 pounds was wide open for the WPIA. On it shows Jackson Gray, the top seed of Mount Lebanon, makes it to the semis, but then drops a pair of matches. How about I think the biggest story here, Antonio Milio, Seneca Valley, winning it all. That's a big story in, in itself. But how about Tanner Rohaley coming into this one as the tenth seed, ends up taking third? Isn't that crazy? That Tanner Rohaley is the tenth seed, ends up taking third place. I mean, those. <laughs> And just you just have to laugh at that and say, man, how how is this? And and that just shows you how wide open 145 was. I am not surprised whatsoever that Antonio Emilio won this weight class. Not at all. Um, I, I thought he was a, a had a shot to to do it. Um, you know, th- look at Jackson Gray and, and look how tough a road he had. He had to to beat Enzo Meraki in that that quarterfinal match four two, and then as you said, Emilio was able to come out and get a, a big win over him. And then that Trey Howard match was just back and forth, back and forth. And I thought one of them's going to end up being pinned here. Yeah. Right? You just knew that. Howard got sloppy. Uh, yeah. I mean, he he got he yeah. Sloppy is a good word. He he definitely got a little lackadaisical on some things. And you know, I'd like to see him open up. Uh, he's got a great you know he's got a great high C. He's got a um, he's good from his feet. He's able to to fight hands really well, but. He just kind of, like you said, kind of got a little sloppy there. And, you know, he didn't open up against Jack Pletcher from Latrobe. He only beat him one nothing. I thought he could have um, – I thought he could have wrestled him a little bit uh, tougher. But Tanner O'Haley, man, he just – he loses to, to Howard, who is his nemesis, right? Those guys right. have wrestled 10 times this year. I think Rahaley's won at least one of them. Um, he loses to him, but then he fights back and beats – uh, Ian Ewing pins him, right? Um, well, actually, he beats Avery Bursick first from from Candy Mac one or two one. So you have a one point match there. Pins uh, Luke Ewing and then beats the top seed Jackson Gray one nothing. But then to close it out, let's just win another one nothing match over Colin Franks from Collinsville. So I, I mean, what's not to, to like about about Tanner O'Haley? Yeah, he had a great tournament, and uh, you know he's able to make it to the state championships, which uh, you know many probably wouldn't have thought coming in, especially with the injuries he had early on in the season. I mean, he was barely he was barely five hundred. He came into the sixteen and twelve, right? And he's a he's a third place finisher out of the WPIL. Now, forty five is not the deepest, strongest weight class from District Seven. However, you know for for what he's going through this year, because he's been up and down, man. He's he's been banged up and injured. I saw him escape to rock. He didn't look good. He looked banged up. Um, we've seen him kind of falter a little bit this year. So he, he obviously put things together uh, during the right weekend, and now he's going to Hershey. And you look at the uh, eight quarterfinalists in this weight class, I would say if you throw them in a bag and wrestle them every week, you're going to get different results oh, every single oh, week. Oh, for sure. Yeah, uh, next week, next week Jackson, Jackson Gray's going to win it. The week after that, Enzo Meraki's going to win it. Uh, and you just – it's and you're like you said, it could be anybody's case. You look at the uh, state bracket, and really, this one is a uh, pretty loaded weight class from outside the WPIO with guys like Ryan Anderson, Cameron Robinson, Panera Johnson. It's going to be tough for the WPIO here in this weight class. Yeah, it's definitely going to be tough sledding for the WPIO here at 145. Uh, you look at Trey Howard. He's got a Brandon Connor uh, who's making his second appearance at the state tournament. Uh, if he opens up, he has a chance to win. If he if he wrestles like he did against Jack Pletcher, he's probably not going to. Tanner Haley, though, I think he has a, a good uh, first round matchup with uh, Brendan Stucco from Pencrest. I think he could win that match. But then he feeds into Panero Johnson. Now let's not forget. Enzo Meraki uh, defeated Panero Johnson at the team state tournament. So, you know, let's uh, you can put things together here. Tanner Haley, I'm, I'm not ever going to count Tanner Haley out of a match, right? He, he's after last weekend, he did pretty well. Antonio Emilio has a tough matchup with Nick Barnhart from Avon Grove. So, yeah, it, it's it's going to be tough. And and how about Joe Moetti from Brashear, uh, a city boy coming out and making it to uh, to the state tournament? Um, I, I was really happy to see him make it. 152 pounds. Cam Connor wins his second WPIAL championship. He was challenged a little bit in the semifinals, but he does uh, pull away in the final with a big win over Alex Weber. 
a couple of big stories here. I would say Colton Gisero coming out and placing third at this weight class and defeating Luca Augustine after losing to him in the quarterfinals. That was a big story. Cole Spencer, a returning state uh, medalist from a year ago, he does not qualify for the tournament uh, after making it to the semis and beating Nick Montalbano, who he lost to the previous week. And then that Montalbano-Augustine match, they went back and forth too. Just a lot of big stories in this weight class to figure out who was the top four. Yeah, and, and Jezero, I mean, if you would have told me he was going to make it to the state tournament, I would have said you're crazy. Um, and not because of a lack of talent, but just because of how deep the weight class was with Cam Connor, Alex Weber, Cole Spencer, Luca Augustine. Um, it's just there's a lot of there's a lot of good good guys here, and Jezro proved that he belongs. Uh, despite like you said, getting pinned by Luke Augustine, he he rocks off some some pretty big wins here, um, including that four two win over Cole Spencer, and he showed it wasn't a fluke because he comes back and beats Augustine seven two for a third place match. So. Um, yeah, that Augustine and Montalbano match was was very physical. Uh, those two had wrestled before. They wrestled at the Powerade tournament. Um, Augustine, and, and I don't know if you remember the end of that match. It was it, it, They almost went to blows. Oh, yeah. um, you know, Cole Spencer, uh, not the tournament he wanted to have. And you know what? On, on day one, I'm thinking, man, he's he looks like he could be, possibly make it back to the finals here. Uh, beating Nick Montalbano 5 nothing, a guy he lost to a week uh, earlier. And then pushing Alex Weber a little bit, 2 nothing. he loses to him. But then things just kind of fall apart, and he loses to Jezero 4-2. So um, pretty tough for him. You know, I know him being a football player probably doesn't help the fact that, you know, it's it's March, and, and he probably had a late start to the season. But um, you don't win a state medal in Hershey and, and not expect him to make it back there. And one guy who did not get a chance to wrestle in this weight, Eli Brinsky. He was a scratch before the tournament even began, or else that would have made this weight class even deeper than what it was. Cam Connor sits at the top at 152 pounds, and he could see Luca Augustine in the opening round if Augustine wins his first match. But he's got the, a couple of big names down there uh, in the bottom half, so you got to like Cam's chances potentially to uh, get to the final. Yeah, I actually I really like his chances. I think you know Luca Augustine could be one of his his uh, bigger hit, uh, matchups here. Uh, if Luke Augustine is able to win because you saw how close he was able to keep it uh, against him at Cannon Mac. You look at other guys here, Michael Kistler from Northampton as a, as a stud, Dylan Shee from Council Rock North. Now, this is a guy who had a, just a phenomenal weekend in the Southeast Regional. He beat the number one guy in the state, Dan Mancini, uh, in the semifinals, and then beats Jackson Err from the Chamonix in the finals. He had himself a, a weekend there. Dan Mancini, if you remember that, he beat Cam Connor in the team state tournament and, and really handled him. I, I thought he, he uh, you know, he, he wrestled Cam really, really tough. So you look at that and say, man, Cam, you know, he could potentially see she, but I don't know. It depends on, on what she shows up. Um, and on that bottom half, things got really messy there uh, with Mancini losing. So now he sets up with Alex Weber to start. This is a guy who was number one in the state ever since he came back. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely tough for 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 Weber to draw Mancini. I like Jezero getting Seth Runshaw for first match. I think he that's a, a definitely a winnable match. I think he does win that match, uh, but unfortunately he feeds into Cole Handlevick. So I, I think Cam's obviously took advantage of that situation. Oh, most definitely. And you got to like his chances to uh, get to the final. His teammate Jack Bloomer he wins his second WPIAL championship. Three falls to get to the final where he wrestled Jake Richardson from Mars, a guy we talked about on the last show and wondering how he was going to do. He had a huge win over Ty McGeary of West Allegheny, 12-2. to two, And you had to think, okay, is Richardson going to upset Bloomer? And that was not the case. Bloomer was very uh, composed in that entire matchup and, and was able to win 4 to nothing. Colby Morris finishes in third place. He beat Max Stout and Ty McGeary. So a good tournament for Morris as well. Rough tournament, though, for McGeary. Yeah, you know, um, McGeary definitely had the toughest toughest uh, tournament here, but Jake Richardson really impressed me because he just went out and, and took care of business against Ty McGeary. Now, remember, Ty McGeary and Jack Bloomer have been back and forth, back and forth. Um, and, and I think, and I asked Bloomer this, I asked Jack, I said, how happy were you that you didn't have to wrestle McGeary? And he's like, oh, I was really happy because, you know, it's just a matchup uh, where he, he just, for some reason, it, it just kind of messes with him a little bit. But he, you're right. I thought he looked very composed against Richardson. And I think the difference was, you know, Bloomer had been there before. Bloomer, um, he just seemed mentally, not, not saying Richardson wasn't mentally prepared because I, I got to talk to him afterwards and he said the pressure was off. But, but Jack just 
looked comfortable out there, right? And he just looked really just poised. And I think really scouting him out a little bit too, because Richardson likes to go upper body. Yeah, he likes sure. those tosses. He tossed McGeary yep. to get that to really open up that match, a five point lead right at the start. It was McGeary just had to battle back ever since, and obviously that's going to be tough to do against Richardson. But that's what Richardson was going for. He was going for that upper body. He was going for those tosses, and Bloomer stayed away from it. He stayed out of it, and that's how he was able to you know not give up any big points. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And and the second note here is as you mentioned, Colby Morris. I mean, he had a great tournament. He beats Maxed out in UTB. But then he comes back, and after losing to Bloomer, actually getting pinned by Bloomer, it was actually pretty quick, too, in the first period. Uh, you know, he's able to bounce back, pin Bryce Long, and then beat Ty McGeary. I, I thought McGeary, if he was going to fall, I thought he was going to fall to Max Dow because, you know, it's hard to come back from that a really th- thrashing he took to Jake Richardson in the semifinals. It's hard to bounce back from that in that blood round. Max Stout had some, uh, some momentum going, but he, you know what? He, he looked good against Stout. Unfortunately, Morris just said, uh, hey, I'm, I'm here too. So um, four quality guys here. Four quality guys going into a, a very deep weight class here at 160. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no uh, easy match here at 160 pounds. Um, really, all the WPIO guys here have some some tough matches, uh, no matter how you slice it. Because you look at the top seed, um, or the top guy from the WPL, Jack Bloomer. He's on the bottom half here, but he's going to get a state medalist. Regardless of who wins that match, he's going to get a state medalist because Patrick O'Neill and Ethan Bainey are both returning state medalists. Neither one of them had the, the regional tournament they wanted. However, they're both there, and he's going to have one of them. So Jack Bloomer was a qualifier last year and never medaled. Um, so that's a tough match. Then he potentially could see Luca Frenzy from Becca on the bottom half, a guy who he wrestled last year in the team state tournament. Frenzy. Uh, had a great Escape the Rock tournament. He, remember, he beat Thane Lawrence. He beat Clay and Woolery. So the kid can wrestle. Um, so Bloomer's, I mean, he's in a tough position. And, of course, he has Trey Kaib on that side, too, um, who's really tough. And I think McGeary, uh, should McGeary make it to, to Kaib, I think Kaib is, is going to win that match. You look at Colby Morris. He has the, the top uh, regional finisher out of the Northeast region, uh, Connor Herzog. And he is a guy who beat Luca Frenzy two weekends in a row. So you, that just tells you how quality he is. Um, you know, I think that's going to be a really, really tough match for him. And then Jake Richardson has Ty Wheelman from Juniata, a guy who was a state medalist last year in double A. So, yeah, it, it's the WPL, while they're all quality guys here, very, very, very tough matchups. Yeah, and every round's going to be such uh, quality matches here at 160. Should be a lot of fun to see how it all breaks down. 170 pounds, Garrett Ninehouse, a can of McMillan, made the drop down and did it in impressive fashion. Four falls to win the title. He is just looking uh, totally on in gear and ready to rock and roll here. You know, eh, I, I, I would make the argument that he, he could have been uh, OW as well. Um, oh, most definitely. You know, four falls uh, over some quality guys, too, especially that match with John Hoover. Um, I, I think he could have easily made a case for, for it. Um, man, he looks good. He, he looks healthy. He looks fast. He doesn't look like that knee's bothering him. No brace on it right no, now? No brace. There's some tape on it, and, and he said that's kind of precautionary. Uh, you know, this is bad news for a guy like Edmund Ruth because um, Gary Nyhouse has been wrestling really, really strong these last two weeks. Um, Got to give John Hoover some credit. He had a big win over Nick Delp, and um, that was a big win for him. And, and I think you know he had gone back and forth with Nick Delp before. Um, that was a big win for him. I know he didn't have the match he wanted in the finals there, but um, you know happy to see that he made it through. Jeff Marker from Peters Township. He had a good tournament, uh, despite the fact that um, he fell to, to nine house by fall. He was able to bounce back, uh, pin Gar- uh, Grant Wanala from Upper St. Clair, and then battles Nick Delp. So, um, again, four quality guys here, but it's a tough weight class. Yeah, it is. But, you know, you got to like Nine House's chances here to have that matchup against Edmund Ruth. John Hoover on the other end, he's going to get Edmund Ruth potentially in the quarters if he can get past that first round matchup. Yeah, he's going to have James Leto from uh, uh, Lower Marion, who had a great tournament uh, in the Southeast region. A guy who Lower Marion doesn't wrestle that, that stacked of a schedule. Um, Nick Delp, though, man, he caught a. He did not get a good draw here at all. He's gonna have Dylan Keene from Bradford, who's thirty-five and zero in the season. I really like Dylan Keene. He uh, he was a guy who wrestled at the Surge tournament. Um, really, just dominated Coy uh, Bastian from from Sealands Grove, a returning state qualifier, tore him up in the regional finals. Dylan Keene is is a guy who I'm keep keeping an eye on here. Um, so Nick Delp, really tough uh, matchup for him. 
You look at Garrett Ninehouse, he's on that bottom half. I think he has – I don't want to jinx him, but I don't think he has issues getting to the finals here. Um, I, I don't think Luke Nichter or Max Hale is going to be able to get past him. Um, you know, Luke Nichter is going to have a really hard match with Angel Garcia from uh, District 12, who he just barely beat in the um, Xavier the Rock finals. So and, – and he actually – Garrett Ninehouse already has a win over, for, over Max Hale this year. So I think – Nine House is, is poised to get to the finals for the first time in his career. It's hard to imagine that that he hasn't been he's been third at the state tournament as a freshman sophomore. Um and I, if he makes it to the finals against Evan Ruth, get your popcorn out. Yeah, so you mentioned uh Hilligus and Klebo being yeah. a highly match. This is I think number two, this right? This is number two for sure. I, I no doubt about it. Um if these two go at it, which I think they will um, it's going to be it's going to be a really fun matchup because they match up very well. Um, you know, Nine House is just is a strong brute. Ruth is is a, a very slick, um, you know, kind of calm, cool, collective. He doesn't really get rattled too easily, but he he's just so fast. He's able to. I saw him score off of a restart against Nictor. I swear he hit an ankle pick in, in point two seconds. It was it was nasty how fast it was. So. Um, yeah, one seventies. This is one that I'm, I'm really excited to see. One hundred eighty-two pounds, Luke Stout, of Mount Lebanon, able to take advantage of uh, Ninehouse making the drop as he wins his first WPIAL championship. And he was impressive against Scott Joel of Belvern and a guy who is a returning state medalist. Yeah, you know, I, I had an interesting conversation about this, and, and they're saying, well, you know, how how does how are Luke Stout and Scott Joel so ranked, you know, close together? I'm thinking, well, because Luke Stout, just because he was he beat him nine two. Scott Joel's a really good wrestler, and he's probably going to end up on the medal stand again this year. Um, but Luke Stout just really separated himself. I think it's him and, and Carter Starocki here at 182 pounds in the state. But, yeah, Luke Stout had a very impressive tournament, beating Brandon Matthews 10-4, and then, as you said, beating Scott Joel 9-2. Uh, how about Cole Whitmer from Trinity? Trinity. Uh, the Trinity Hillers, man. My dad's my dad called me right after and said, Hey man, Cole Whitmer's going. Trinity's going to the state tournament. I was like, yeah, Dad, they are. Good job. And uh, you know, Whitmer had a, a good, good match, uh, good tournament. He, he did lose to Scott Joel, fourteen uh, five, but was able to to come back and get two uh, tough wins. Uh, and Cole Whitmer coming back in that blood round against David Meckleravy from Indiana uh, beat him one nothing. That was a really hard fought win for him. But then he takes care of business against Brandon Matthews, who I thought had a, another good tournament here too. So. Um, yeah, but the story here, Luke Stout, man, he's he's head and shoulders above. Yeah, and we like to see his chances against Staraki in the final. But outside of those two in a collision course, Scott Joel will likely have Staraki in the quarterfinals. So we'll see how he fares against him. But outside of those two with Staraki and Stout, can Whitmer pull off an upset here? Yeah, I don't think he's going to pull an upset against uh, Joey Milano from Springford in that first round match. I just don't see that happening. Uh, Joey Milano is, is is a really, really fun wrestler. He's very tough. Uh, only a sophomore, um, but you know, that's not to say he can't wrestle back uh, if he should lose that one. Uh, Matthews has a, a tough, tough round match with a returning state medalist, uh, Ty Mosall uh, from Unionville, and um, yeah, I mean, I think. Scott Joel has the advantage over Jake Lucas, but like you said, he runs right into Car Strocky. I think Strocky and, and uh, Stout are just – they're the two two best – clearly best guys here in this weight class. 195 pounds, Max Shaw, Thomas Jefferson able to win the title. But it was the story of Luke Montgomery of Bethel Park. He ends up finishing in second place, knocking off Braden Roskoski of Kiski as well as Justin Hart of Hampton. Roskoski ended up having a scratch on day two. I guess he's been dealing a lot with uh, – ear infections and so he gets them pretty bad pretty dizzy uh so he just wasn't wrestling like himself on friday night and knew that he wasn't gonna be able to make it uh, and wrestle a guy like john myers on the consolations so he ends up scratching out but uh montgomery just a one heck of a tournament yeah i mean uh, i was not surprised whatsoever i thought luke was gonna have a good tournament um you know he's he's wrestled really well this year i think he is um he's really improved upon uh last year um and, and he really showed that this this weekend, uh, beating Roskoski as you said six one, and then Hart. On the other hand, I, I was Hart looked he, Hart looked flat, yeah, all weekend in my opinion. Um, he looked he looked slow against Myers, um, was lucky to survive Myers, and then Montgomery really handled that match. And I think he was lucky to beat Justin Kramer four three here too. Then John Myers comes back and pins him in a minute. So. Um, but Max Shaw, another guy who who just really impressed me, uh, two falls, including one in the finals here. You know, there's a reason he's going into this state tournament undefeated. 
And he's going to have a, tough, a semi-tough draws. He could potentially have Donovan Ball, Cedarcliff in the quarterfinals. And then, obviously, Cole Herbis is sitting up top waiting for him in a potential final. Yeah, you know, uh, Cole Herbis is, is really, really special. He's a, he's a really good wrestler from State College. Uh, in fact, he majored Donovan Ball from Cedar Cliff, a guy who Max Shaw beat in the Powerade final. So I do expect us to see a rematch of the Powerade uh, finals at 195 pounds with Donovan Ball and Max Shaw. But I think Max Shaw is if he wrestles like he did this past weekend, he's going to the finals uh, and he's going to push, he's going to push Cole Herbis. But um, Luke Montgomery, you know, he has a, a wild card from Northeast in Philadelphia. Jameel Coles, a solid wrestler, man. Jameel is just, I, I've, I've watched him wrestle since he was in youth. He used to win youth titles all the time. Um, and, and he's only 14 one. He had a tough match against Damon Moyer from Liberty in the finals, but um you know, that's if there's anyone that's going to beat, knock somebody off. It's Luke Montgomery, the way he's been wrestling. But I think that is a, a tough, tough match for him. Um, Justin Hart, I think he has a, a pretty uh, fair. I think he has a great, great draw here. I think he beats Hefflinger from Big Spring, and then uh, I think Damon Moore is beatable as well. So um, Hart, you know, despite his his poor weekend he had i think he he sits up pretty well yeah he could bounce back uh and make a big uh stance here at the state tournament 220 pounds ryan wines of norwin he had a heck of a tournament beating dylan ferretti of hemfield after losing to him the previous week and then beating ogden atwood of armstrong guy we didn't know too much about going into because we haven't seen him a lot this year but wines and able to knock him off in the final you know i mean uh, looking back and reflecting back on it 220 was almost as wide open as 45. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, we thought Atwood would be kind of the, the top dog here, considering he's undefeated at returning state qualifier. But, you know, he, he struggled as well. Um, you know, he struggled in that, that uh, semifinals match with Trent Patrick from Greensburg-Salem. Um, he, had, he had a lot of issues with him. And then, of course, in the finals, you know, Weinsman is able to come out. Uh, a guy who had finished second in the section a week prior to that, he avenges that loss to Dylan Ferretti, a, a match that we, we kind of said would probably happen here um look at the section one power here uh you got ryan's wine winesman from norwin you got dylan ferretti hempfield trent patrick greensburg salem a lot of a lot of power there you look at where they're stacked as far as the 220 pound state tournament goes and you know just kind of like the same way as 145 they they don't have the best draw going into this yeah not not much and you know you can kind of to throw throw anything up and see what sticks here uh i think dylan ferretti has a good draw he's got bill brosco from marble uh newtown and i think he wins that match but then he's feeding into shane noonan who's a undefeated uh one of the top guys in the state 41 and 0 he's he's number two in the state and then um of course on that top half trent patrick will have dylan roden haber from redland should he win that he's going to get the top seed and returning state champion hunter katka so not a good draw there for him ryan weinsman on the other hand, he's got um, he's got Gus Dellinger from from Holidaysburg, a match he can win, um, especially if he wrestles like he did last weekend. But um, then he could potentially see Jamal Brandon. So um, you know, Weinsman's a, a guy here who I wouldn't let's put it this way: I wouldn't be shocked if he's in the semifinals, <laughs> um, just because of how things have been going. Two hundred eighty-five pounds, Jake Slinger of Upper Saint Clair three falls to get to the final and then an impressive win nate hogel though took him down in that uh, first period and you guys think oh boy but then slinger just took it to him the rest of the way yeah i i kind of think it just ticked him off a little bit you know because yeah when he got that takedown i was thinking man okay maybe this is gonna be a little bit closer but then you know jake did what what jake does and that's just dominate people and and he did and hoagland's not Hoagland's a good wrestler. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, and you look at Slinger beating Hoagland 9-2, and you say, oh, it's only 9-2. But let's not forget, Hoagland's one of the top guys in the state. In fact, I think he's a guy who's going to challenge for a state medal here. So um, I was very impressed with the way he wrestled. You look at the uh, state bracket and three top dogs. We talked about them last week, all coming into this undefeated. Kwan Debo, Michael Wolf Graham, Jake Slinger. Boy, oh boy. Slinger is going to have to beat them both in order to get a state title. Yep. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. I've been talking about heavyweight for a really long time, which is, you know, people say, oh, heavyweight. You know, why are you so excited about that? Because these are three really quality guys. Quan DeBose, a house. He's he's just huge. Michael Wolf Graham is a, he wrestles like a 145 pounder. He's He is drenched with sweat by the end of the first period because he works so, so hard. And Jake Slinger is a, a, a bull. I mean, he just is so massive. Um, I think this is going to – I, I said this th – was that on this show that I said they should throw them all in a cage? Yes, that was this show. And you said no? You said they couldn't do that? Well, I mean, they can't do that, but 
They I should. Mean, they should. These three guys are studs. They, they are. I, I think they're head and shoulders above the rest of them, um, the rest of the, the field here. Uh, Hoagland's got a, a nice draw with uh, Raymond Christes from Dallas Town. I think um, that's a, a winnable match for him here. Isaiah Vance has Sam Blevins from Oxford. I think that's a match he can win. I also think he can beat uh, Colton Deary from Garnett Valley, too. So Isaiah no Vance, problem. despite Great not value. wrestling the best – uh, last weekend, I think he could have a chance. And same with Quinn Franklin. He is, a, I think, a favorable matchup with Blaine Davis. But, of course, the winner feeds into Michael Wolf. It, it was pretty joining good. Joining us now is Upper St. Clair Senior, I mean, Jake Slinger. Jake, thanks for joining us. States and wrestle for some medals there. Well, congratulations, first and foremost, on winning the WPIAL championship. How does it feel to finally get to the top of the podium in the WPIAL? Yeah, I was, I was pretty upset, to be Let's honest. Let's talk about your uh, WPIO um, championship really performance. Uh, you ended up getting in the finals the against Nathan Hoagland, a guy you have uh, uh, very familiar with, wrestled a few times this season. He gets then, that uh, takedown on you in the first happened. period. Were you a little surprised I mean, by uh, the takedown? I kind of dwell on it. You know, I immediately got back up and got a takedown, coming right back at him. So, uh, really, it was just a, a wake. Like, it was just waking me up to to really get moving. Uh, really just, uh, lack of being, ha- or, sorry, uh, I- I'd say it's really just not having my motor going throughout the, the earlier matches. Uh, what do you attribute uh, that slow two, start to coming in the finals? A minute and then, uh, uh, two minute and 10 second one, I believe in the semifinals. So, uh, really didn't have much to, to get me going in the first day and a half. So, uh, just a little bit of a slow start. Yes, very much. We we drilled extensively today, working on mainly shot defense. I'm sure your coaches are reminding you that that's something that can't happen in the state tournament, right? I'm happy to hear that. And actually, before we we got you on, I said I think that that takedown by Hogan just kind of ticked you off a little bit, and it it kind of fired you up a little bit. And you kind of just confirmed that um, you don't really need to get fired up for the the state tournament because there's going to be so many studs there. Um, and you know, we we talked mm-hmm, about the definitely. big three: Quan Debo, uh, thirty six and zero, Michael Wolfgram. Now. 32 and, and, and of course you're 36 and 0 as well. I'll, I'll get a, a crack at my um, you got to be pretty excited in this, this actually heavyweight class with like some me. really really tough and, uh, wrestlers similar to, to my to style so it's going to be really really fun to actually go out and wrestle against him and uh, really get my blood pumping and uh, get an opportunity to, to really see what I got Yeah, absolutely, Jake. And I think you're right. You you do uh, both have kind of similar styles. You guys both like to put a lot of points on the board. Mm-hmm. Not looking too far ahead, but if Quan Debo were to make it there, he kind of slows matches down. He's not necessarily offensive minded, but he's just so big. Um, you know, how is it as a heavyweight? Because you know, other weight classes, you can kind of gauge. You know, there's not too many different styles, right? Uh, it, uh, at it heavyweight, though, you have different is, uh, body styles, you have different sizes. How difficult is that for when you? I wrestled Especially a guy who wasn't always at heavyweight. Um, going um, how, how up to heavyweight now, I mean, kind of most of the guys, they don't have much weight on me, you know, you but they still are a lot styles bigger than me in, in size comparison. So, I mean, going up to heavyweight, I, I didn't really have a choice to bulk up too heavy or, or uh, get too big, so I, I just kept on trying to increase my speed, my agility, and try and push the paces in, in these matches and um, just try and tire out guys because that's that route is what really gets them down the dirt if you get them real tired in the first second period. Yes, definitely. I mean, I wrestled some heavyweight matches um, this summer, or actually preseason uh, wrestling around. I wrestled actually at the Edinburgh Open, College Open. There were some pretty big guys there, and these guys pushing the limit 287. 
and I was taking shots and I'm trying to score points. I mean, they're very big guys and there's not much room to make errors, but I uh, just had to keep on pushing forward with it. You know, I, I mentioned this to Greg, and I'm, I'm curious what your I, thoughts are. I heard that, that, I heard that um, you, in the, the, the podcast last week when Quanto you guys were talking in, about in it. Match. I thought that was pretty uh, maybe funny. Maybe throw in some tools, like maybe that. throw like a chair, maybe a, 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 bat, a baseball bat, and just let you guys go at it. Would you Would you be uh, up for that, or is that something you just you rather not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. And, you, and that's probably, yeah. See, uh, uh, just uh, a, a straight that, cage match. I'm not really it. sure. Yeah. Two other big guys. Yeah, a few people find you funny. A they're few. they're okay. strong well, in their own way. So, so. <laughs> so I don't know how that would particularly well, go Jake, down. Uh, but let's let's like appease Jeff yeah. for a second. How would you do in that cage match? <laughs> That's right. Me, well, me too. Uh, really? Just from George Mason. Uh, <laughs> uh, looking ahead a little bit, Jake, uh, past uh, the State Department, you decided to uh, go to Georgia Mason and continue your wrestling career. Uh, what, I know Mason Beckman was probably a big really, part of that decision, down, but now that he's coaching there, but uh, talk a little about why you decided to uh, continue spell, to wrestle there. Uh, some other guys uh, on the team, other recruits, and also the the big factor was, was the coaching staff. I mean, Mason Beckman, I have a great connection with him already. He's been my club coach for all of high school. And um, Frank Beasley, uh, an outstanding college coach. I mean, I got to talk with him a few times whenever we practiced, and it was it was just really just one on one, telling me what I need to improve on here and there, and it was just a, a great feeling knowing that I'd have him in my corner. So I was with um, Cam Eppert and uh, Bo Donahue. Oh, Bo Donahue, yeah. Yes, definitely. I mean, Voss, he's going to graduate this year, but I'm pretty sure he'll be coming back for graduate school, which is going to be phenomenal uh, to have him as a practice for him. And, 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 you, can't, and you can't forget that they have a pretty solid heavyweight in that uh, Voss, too. Times. He's he's probably going to stick around there. and, and, help and you uh, out trying, trying my best to, to take him down. is is a challenge in itself because he is he's very defensive. He's a great wrestler, and I, I give him a lot of praise. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, Jake, we appreciate you joining us on the uh, podcast, and uh, best of luck as you head into the state tournament this weekend. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake Slinger, for joining us on the podcast. He was a lot of fun to talk to. Absolutely. He's a lot of fun. I'm glad he took me up on the, the cage match. So there you go, Greg. Not everyone thinks it's a an outlandish idea, okay? I mean, we're talking about high school students here, though. We're talking about three of the best heavyweights in the state, okay? They, they've got twice the size on both of us. I think we, they can handle themselves. I, you're probably right. 106 pounds and double-A, Joey Fisher of South Park. Uh, he's got a couple of big, uh, tough tasks ahead of him if he wants to get a stake uh, gold. Yeah, he does, but you know, I think he's up for the challenge. I think he's actually on a, a good side of the bracket. I think he could potentially see Sheldon Seymour from Troy. Uh, two undefeated wrestlers going at it in the semifinals. I think that could happen. 113, Ryan Michaels is on the bottom half of the bracket. Do you like his chances to get to the final? I absolutely do. I think, you know, he, he's got a, a tough, tough uh, job to do, though, if he wants to get it done. He's going to potentially, uh, he's going to have to get through Luke Fagley or Gabe uh, Gramley from, from Mifflinburg. Um, and, of course, you have Cole Bisco from Southern Columbia on the bottom half and, and Logan Jacque from Eisenhower. So he, he's got his hands full. Um, but I'd rather be there than on top half with Gable Strickland, Jackson Arrington, Andrew Brest, so, um, and Adam Jacob. So, but Ryan Michaels, I said it last week, I think he's poised to, to do really well here at the state tournament. 
Ian Oswald uh, gets the top seed at 120, but boy, it couldn't work out a little bit better for him. Ryan Crookham as well as Bo Bayless, two of the other top guys in this way. I think a clear top three. He's going to have to beat them both, though. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Bayless is on that bottom half, and, and Crookham's up on the top half with him. So I think you know that's obviously going to be uh, tough for, for Ian to get past here. I think Crookham's just on a different level. Uh, even as a freshman, I just think he's he's kind of head and shoulders above the rest of them. 126 pounds. Ty Simmerman, he's on the bottom half of the bracket. Do you like his chances to potentially get to a semifinal here? I actually do. I really do. I think he has a very favorable matchup. Uh, ben Heinrich from Hughesville. And then, really, I don't know who comes out of that. I mean, Bryce now, yeah, he's he's solid. But Seth Hoops and Chase Proudfit are both guys that I wouldn't look past. So Simmerman, I think, has a, a good shot to get to the semis. 132 pounds for the WPIAL. They got... Pigtail matches, and they're uh, definitely going into t- uh, tough guys. Josh Jones is where Donovan Chambers is headed to. Connor Redinger is going to have Caden Cassidy. Tough sledding. Yeah, very, really, really tough sledding. And uh, I saw Redinger tweeted out something like, hey, I'm just going to go out there and wrestle. I'm up four weight classes from last year, so I'm just going to go out there and give it his all. But, uh, yeah, Caden Cassidy is a, a tough guy to be feeding into. 138, Jacob Beely, Kenny Kaiser, are they on a collision course? Um, you know, it could potentially be, but I wouldn't look past Marquise Branford either from uh, Wilson. I think he's going to have something to say about that. And I think Eric Gibson's going to have something to say about that as well. Um, you know, I think that bottom half is a little bit more wide open. I think Ely's clearly the best in the top half, but it's it's not going to be easy. I mean, Rocco Bartolo's there, uh, returning state medals, Ty Martin, um, Avery Bassett. So it's not going to be easy, but um, I do like his chances. 145 pounds, John Rocco Cazales. He's on the bottom half. He could uh, likely face Gabe Miller uh, in the quarterfinals. Yeah, he could if he's able to get past uh, Cameron Klein uh, from from Midwest. But yeah, Gabe Miller is a guy who just came off of a huge weekend pinning Andrew Serniglia in the finals of Regents. Um, so I think you know it's it's going to be tough for him. As, as same with uh, Shane Kemper. Should he win, he's going to get Gavin Garcia. Trent Schultes of Freedom, he's on the bottom half, avoids Ryan Volok, uh, Volok on the top, but he's going to have to beat D.J. Erickson if he wants to make it to that final. Yeah, most likely it's going to be Erickson, but I wouldn't look past uh, Harder either from from Bermudian Springs. Um, I think, you know, Schultes, if he wrestles like he did in the region tournament, uh, he's going to have a good shot to to make it to the semifinals and beyond. Dane Lawrence, does he get a rematch with Tyler Stoltzfus? You know, that's a good question. I, I think he could, um, but there's a few guys that are probably going to stand in his way. Cade Lynn from Southern Columbia, uh, Matt Arutio from Saucon Valley. I think he is a guy who uh, I wouldn't look past either, but I definitely think Stoltzfus is, is uh, a favorite to get to the finals against Lawrence. Jared McGill sitting at the top half of 170. That means Christian Clutter on the bottom. He's got Derek Brown at the bottom, Carl Harris down there on the bottom, David Galasso there as well. It's a loaded bottom half. Do you like Clutter to be able to potentially get to that final and have another rematch with McGill? You know, I, I do. Um, you know, Carl Harris is a two-time state medalist, but Clutter's looked so well this year, and he's looked really good. Um, just hope he opens up his offense. Yeah, if he opens – I was just going to say that. If he opens up and he wrestles like it's his senior year and he has nothing to lose, he's going to be fine. But – uh, if he doesn't, I could see him losing in the, the quarterfinals. 182 pounds. Dayton Pitzer's on the bottom half. Austin Wally sitting there at the top. Do you, do you like those guys and potentially Bryson Miller as well to have a great tournament? Uh, I, I like Dayton Pitzer to have a great tournament. I think Dayton Pitzer is going to do really well for himself. In fact, I think he's going to make it to the finals here. Um, Austin Wally, yeah, I think he has a, a good shot. I like his draw here with uh, Cameron from, from Slippery Rock. Bryson Miller, uh, you know, I mean, it, McClintick is, is a really, really solid wrestler, so it's going to be a tough round for him. But um, that that top half is a little bit easier, in my opinion, than the bottom. 195 pounds. Jonathan Vargo with his fifth-place finish doesn't do himself a lot of favors. No, he uh, he got Clay Green from Tawanda and then Kale Black from Eisenhower, uh, who is a freshman. That's an interesting matchup there should he get that. But, uh, you know, 95 is 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 pretty stacked with some top-end talent with Gage Garcia and, and Colby Franklin. So uh, it's going to be tough for, for Vargo. Even Jeff Magan, he's going to have Colin Fagley uh, in a round of 16 if he wins his first. 220 pounds. Dom DeLuca sitting 
sitting at the top. Do you like his chances to get to the final? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think if he wrestles uh, like he did at Powerade and he wrestles like he has been throughout the postseason, I think he does get there. Um, he's been there before, so one would think that he's he's poised to get there again. Uh, Colby Flank from Wilson's a tough match. Uh, so is Wyatt Owen, uh, to be frank. Um, but I think he's on a, a good side of the bracket for him. Cameron Woods, a guy he could potentially see. Um, but I think it's Jacob McMaster who stands the, the biggest chance to take him out, and he's on the bottom half. 285 pounds, Gerald Comedy as well as Riley Kemper, both feeding into region champs. Yeah, Comedy's going to have a tough uh, tough match against Derek Hunter from Jim Thorpe and then uh, could potentially see Ryan Weitz from North Schuylkill. And then, as you said, Riley Kemper, should he win, he gets the one of the top guys in the states, Colby Whitehill. So um, yeah, not a lot of upside promise there. Make sure you stay with us all weekend long as we're going to be keeping you updated on all the wrestling action. Should be a lot of fun at the Giant Center. Yeah, we got a lot of coverage coming your way. We got updates, we got previews, we got update rankings, we got other podcasts. We we have a lot coming at you. Uh, and then we're turning around and, and doing some things with the classic and national. So we, I mean, we just got so much going on. It's uh, it's it's overload right now. It's system overload right now. My brain feels like mush, and we haven't even started yet. So make sure, and if you're looking for updates throughout, we're going to keep you updated. Twitter, Facebook the web no matter where you want to check us out stay with us we're gonna keep it all going for you and then next week will be our last show for the wpil side of things and we're do what we always do we're gonna get all the wpil guys who win the state title we're gonna get them on the show joining to talk about winning the state gold it's been tough in the past because we've had so many so hopefully that's uh, the same thing this year yeah we will certainly see and find out but it should be a lot of fun to watch and see how the final week unfolds I want to thank jake slinger of upper st Clair for joining us for our broadcast partner jeff upson i'm greg warnock thanks for listening in to war up on the wpil